Hey guys, Jesse Lavelle, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a review about the RF 50mm f1.8 lens. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it worth it? And is it better than the EF 50mm f1.8? So what I'm going to start off about saying about this lens is that when I first got it, I was actually really happy with it because, you know, it's just a nicer looking lens. It feels a little bit like better quality. The focus slash control ring here, and that's what this does, this can actually be switched between the control and focus controls on this ring, feels really nice and really smooth. So I was like actually excited about this lens because it just looks nice and it feels nicer than the EF 50mm f1.8 that just, you know, doesn't look that nice. This little control ring here or uh, focus ring just feels really chintzy and not as good as the RF one did. So, you know, just from a build perspective, I think that this lens is a bit nicer. Going forward with that, I'd say that the sharpness is a little bit sharper than the EF version, but just a little bit, not, you know, enough to really write home about or anything. As well as it also has a little bit better contrast, and I do think that the bokeh looks a little bit smoother than the EF version. Now, all of those things are really good. You know, you have to consider that this lens is put out at a $200 price point, so what can you really expect from this lens? You can't expect it to be a professional level lens, right? I mean, it's $200. That being said, you know, this thing can take a nice shot. It does make your mirrorless lens nice and light, so I think for $200, it's worth owning just because you can throw it on your camera, you can walk around all day with like a nice little light camera, and you can really get some really nice shots with it. Like, it does retain decent sharpness even when shooting wide open at f1.8. f1.8 obviously gives us the chance to at least get a decent amount of light onto the sensor in dark scenarios, and for $200, I mean, that's, that's something that's really awesome to have. After that, that's where things start to kind of break down for me with this lens because one, the only way to actually switch between autofocus and manual focus is to actually go into the camera itself and do it through software. There's no autofocus manual focus switch and where that switch would normally be is where we're going to find the focus and control ring switch, right? And that's what's going to make this ring either focus for you by wire, which is again not a really great experience. Like when it focuses by wire, it's really, you feel this weird vibration as I'm focusing in one direction and not the other. It's just not that smooth and it, even when using autofocus, I'm still kind of feeling that real buzzing kind of, you know, vibration to the autofocus mechanism in here. On top of that, I do a lot of video shooting, so I was hoping I'd be able to use this for video. I can use it for video, I think it does capture nice images, it's just that the autofocus isn't what I want from autofocus during video mode. It, it tends to be kind of like mechanical and kind of quick and twitchy. And it's not that it's like a fast autofocus, it's really not that fast of an autofocus. It's just kind of a mechanical autofocus and not the nice kind of smooth slow pull like say I get from the slightly more expensive 35mm that I like a little bit better in that regard. So, you know, the autofocus isn't great for video modes. It's decently you know, speedy when you're shooting still images, but I wouldn't say that it's great. It's not like using an L lens, that's for sure. Um, you know, there's no weather sealing. But all things being said, like I said, you have to remember and, and keep it in perspective of that this lens costs $200, it's extremely lightweight, and it gives you f1.8. So it hits all of the important marks that are going to allow you to take, like, a really nice image, and I don't think anybody would look at an image that you would take out of this lens and be able to tell that it came from an inexpensive lens. It's going to look really, really nice. It's just about how you get there with this lens, where it starts to break down, and where I would think, you know, somebody looking for something like a more professional L lens is going to think that it's probably not worth it. And it's not that it's not worth it, it's only $200, it's just... You know, if you're expecting the type of quality or the type of controls that you would get from, you know, a $500 or $1,000 lens, it's not going to be there. The ability to switch the autofocus and the manual focus back and forth isn't there. you got to do it in the camera. That's like kind of a really big bummer. When you do switch over to manual focus, it's really not a great experience with this. Well, this is very smooth and very nice feeling. Once you're using it for manual focus, 
the fact that it's not you know physically connected to the focus mechanism and it's by wire is gonna make it, it just makes it like kind of a chintzy feeling that isn't great to really control and again there's like a buzzing type of a sensation to when it's moving which isn't really desirable um, it's not super loud like say my EF 24 millimeter that has a real clicky poppy type of a noise to the autofocus this one doesn't have that super loud noise but there is a little bit of an audible noise and I, I would say you know as long as you're using a shotgun mic like I do probably not gonna have any problems if you're trying to use the internal mic you're probably gonna definitely have some issues because it does have a little bit of a vibration to it image quality wise I really like this lens I think it's sharp wide open I think f 1.8 so that we can get a decent amount of light onto our sensor I think that optically it's just a little bit better than the EF counterpart that I used to use and I just never was a fan of that lens to be honest with you and I am a bigger fan of this lens than that one but that may be just because I don't have a lot of native RF lenses and I just get excited about being able to actually use a native lens but there's definitely some drawbacks to having this $200 lens well I do think that there is some value to it as just a walk around kind of, you know, lens, just general purpose, keep your rig nice and light so you can walk around all day. This is going to fit your bill pretty well. If you're looking for something that's going to be like super professional and give you like really good control, like say, you know, manual focus control, well autofocus is still enabled, you're not going to be able to do things like that. I don't think the autofocus system is that great. Well, it's not terrible. Um no stabilization if you use something like the r6 that kind of you know mitigates a little bit of that having the in-body stabilization so all being said i do think that this is a great lens for the price if it's something you're considering i say go ahead and give it a try it's a really nice native lens for the price you're going to be able to go around and take really nice high image quality shots it's going to retain decent sharpness even if you're shooting at f1.8 so, I mean, what more could you ask from, you know, an inexpensive lens like this? It's, it really kind of hits the marks where it counts, and then, you know, it, it kind of cuts back where it can to save you the money. Anyway, guys, if you think this video helped you in any way, think about going below, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on my next video.